Coming up here at Circle of the Bay Podcast, episode 50, 50. We're going to go ahead and recap this past week, AEW Dynamite. It's a two-part episode. Also, AEW News, New Japan News as well, and also Pro Wrestling News. It's another season of cut season, so we'll be discussing about that. And also, the Black Wednesday. Other, Thursday. Unfortunately, yes. And then another dark day, I don't, you know. And also, we're discussing giving our, you know, recap of WrestleMania 37, 92. So don't go anywhere as episode 50 starts right now. And we have a special message from somebody that loves you guys. So hear him out. There you go. Hey, ¿qué tal amigos? Les habla Penta El Cero Miedo para mandar un saludo a mis amigos de Circle of the Bay, en el número uno podcast, y ya saben, por ser. Welcome everyone to the Circle of Debate Podcast, episode 50, 50, 50 episodes in it, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, we made oh, it man. this far, man. Big five zero. Five, halfway oh. to 100. Oh yeah, halfway to 100, and almost close to the one year anniversary as well, too. We're almost there. That's right. The host of TV is what I can see here with my familia. The, we're not the pinnacle, okay, so because it's four horsemen right here. Now. We're, not <laughs> the pineapple. we're not the pineapples, okay? We're not the pineapples. We're not the four horsemen. We're the degeneration worst, worst. That's right. And I'll be here with El Director, the director that likes everything nice and smooth. And if you, if you don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'll, I'll cut you faster than this. There you go. <laughs> too soon? Is that too soon? <laughs> it's okay, it's cool. <laughs> that literally happened today. I know. <laughs> but yes. That's speaker one, Chris Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, he is back. El Don Calles. Don Calles. He is back after taking a short break. Super kicking cameraman, making hot soups. I don't and you know, going in that adventure with Indiana Jones. I don't know what you're doing, but he is here back in action. That is Mr. MGC, Matthew Don Gaius Steamboat. Well, of, well, of course, the, so many things are possible when we do, <laughs> when it's the four of us together, you cut the tassels off and you super kick people with the, with the camera in their hands. The young bucks don't dress like girls bicycles anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because they they reach that next level consciousness that's right mgc um, is the I'm, gonna, I'm gonna interrupt with a surprise real quick i know we're a little bit late on this and you guys don't know what i have planned so this is a surprise for everybody i didn't know i was gonna have this plan um but this is our first episode for the entire week it's thursday right now as of, as of this filming uh but the man who speaks the truth the man who predicts everything mr jeremy prophet just had a birthday last sunday and i wanted to wish him a very sincere happy birthday and i got a little surprise for you my brother happy birthday Man, hope it's not too late. That's right. That's right. Ha ha! Medley of themes. The medley of no themes. chance in hell. That's right, pal. <laughs> There's no chance in hell. And all right. And of course, I have to introduce the man of all men. And he is the champ of all champs because he is the right? race. race. Flair, Hogan, all pale in comparison to the god of podcasting. And that is right. 
because he is a multi-time recording artist, a graduate from Casa Dominguez Hills. He's also a 2018 Los Angeles Karaoke World Champion. He also lives 1,977,000 ,000 miles from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Canada. He is the master disaster, the king of sting, the man with the plan, money, my love. Ooh, man, it, it was just a dream. And now we're here. Episode 50. Let's do this. I'm excited. I am very excited as well. But before we do, we want to go ahead and thank and settle Miedo. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. For the shout out as you were as Money Mike was alongside with the signings with the Lucha Bros and Bandito. And I'll, I mean, I'm, man, what an awesome signing. If you have not seen it, I'll put the, the, the YouTube channel for Mike's Lopez. You can also subscribe where he puts uh, the, uh, the adventure with Money Mike Lopez that he heads over to the Lucha Republica as he's agreed to meet with Lucha Bros. But I want to thank uh, Penta Cero M for the shout outs for your circle debate, the number one podcast in California. <laughs> uh oh, no one pun intended to anybody else who's watching this. My apologies. Wait, who yes. else is in California besides, uh, this... nope, just us. <laughs> <laughs> but also want to give a cheers to everyone for episode 50. I want to tell everybody thank you very much for all to our viewers and subscribers and new viewers and subscribers. Cheers to all of you guys and cheers to my, my, my family here. Episode 50, cannot wait for 50 more and probably more. And uh, believe me, halfway there. we're halfway there. <laughs> and it's not going to stop. We're going to keep, keep on going. Salus. Prost. Aha. Uh -huh. Prost. Grastrovia. Nastrovia. Perestroika? I don't know. I heard that in the movie one. Kumpai, kumpe. Salud. Kumpe. What did I say just now in Russian? Grastrovia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, re reforming the political system in Russia. So, yeah, Perestroika. <laughs> <laughs> I don't look things up, I just say them. <laughs> Yeah. George knows that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and start it off with AEW. This past Yo. day, W Dynamite. Love the Moxie shirt. Love it. Money, yeah. money. All right. Start with the opening match. Young Bucks. Now we already know when heel because somebody over here turn them, you know, turn them heel. Oh, I, I brought them to the next level consciousness. Of course, they, they it's the right place to be mentally yeah. you know cut the tassels off and come to where your mind expands and that is right they defeated uh, ray phoenix and Pac from death triangle retaining their AEW world tag team titles before we get into the match man did you see those shoes though oh the oh, yours the the fake. did you hear the chant those are fake those are fake. <laughs> I was like, wow, I couldn't believe this. I thought that was, I was like, did, I'm pretty sure DR does not make wrestling boots, but okay, bro. <laughs> I, you know, I'm surprised, especially the price for those motherfuckers. Damn, I was like, I don't know, man. It's like almost a house with down payment. That's All that right. impact money right there. Yeah, that's, that's, that, yeah, it's that impact money. But yes, it was a fantastic, incredible, great opening match. And also have to give it for AEW. Now, how Money Mike said it last week as well, that now they're on their own. So we have to see how they're going to do on the viewership, which they did not do bad at all. They hit 1.21 million viewers. They were number three all overall being watched. So congratulations for them for a, a fantastic job of doing that. And how many views did NXT get that Eight, Wednesday uh, night? At when, that Wednesday night? How many views did NXT get on that Wednesday night? Uh, you talk about this past Tuesday? Because they're on Tuesdays. No, no, no. Wednesday. The last Wednesday? Oh, the last Wednesday, Wednesday you talk about? Yesterday. Yesterday. How many views? No, a, a, no, NXT is on Tuesdays now. No, they I know that. So how many views did they get on Wednesday? Oh, zero. Zero. AEW <laughs> is winning. <laughs> but they have a, you know, 800, 800, I know, I'm fucking <laughs> <laughs> I, I love NXT. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joshing around. They did a fantastic job. Uh, this match overall, great heelish work. In, in, incredible, you know, incredible ending. But I'm going to go ahead and give the floor to the director, give us your thoughts about that. A great What's opening up, man? tag match. Yeah. Um, AEW has this great thing going right now where the very first match is a what I consider a five-star TV match. 
Um, and they've been doing that for the past couple of weeks. And I love it. I, I kind of don't miss at all back when WWE, they would start Raw off with a 20 to 30 minute in-ring uh, speech. I don't miss those at all. I much <laughs> They used to, I mean, The Rock would come out and just cut a promo for 20 minutes and set the precedent for the rest of the show. I like this a lot more. Um, I'm not comparing, obviously, this match to a young, to a, to a Rock promo, but it was just, that was just an example. Um, yeah, I mean, five-star TV match. That's what I'm, I have to rebrand my rating system because it was, it probably would have been a five-star pay-per-view match. You could put this on like uh, all or nothing and I would have been like, holy shit. So yeah, good, clean, fun. Uh clean victory essentially you know give or take young bucks tactics but there was no like weapons or interference so um yeah i love that canadian destroyer that um one of the jackson bros hits the rebound destroyer yeah that was i think the new Nick thing jackson. right now is yeah the new thing is now who can just come up with a better destroyer um i think they saw what bad bunny did a couple of days ago and we're like ah we could top that and uh <laughs> maybe, maybe I really, I really dug the Bad Bunny one, um, but this was cool too. Awesome, awesome. Money Mike, talk to me, baby. Man, it, it's just um, it goes to show that for anybody that tuned in, that was mostly an NXT viewer, and they gave AEW a try. I feel like this just set the tone. You know, they 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 went for it right right away, and they needed to, so that they could hold on to those viewers. You know. They're going to have to do that, right? And I, who else better than the Young Bucks? Who better than Ken? Who better, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> definitely. Uh, man, I was watching that, and uh, good thing I didn't get any spoiled. Because usually I get it spoiled because I watch the, the West Coast feed. But, man, I yeah. enjoyed the, the hell out of that match. Uh, it was a great way to start. And, um, yeah, I actually think it was the best match of the night. All right. So I'm... Ending it off with, of course, the man behind the invisible, the invisible hand himself, Matt Callis. Yeah, next level consciousness. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, something to keep in mind is that both Pac and uh, Ray Phoenix, Ray Phoenix Jr., they're both former world champions. Ray Phoenix, uh, Ray Phoenix is a uh, the former trip triple A mega campeon on. Champion, and you know, and Pac is the former Dragon Gate champion. Those are two top guys. Those are a singles champions that the Young Bucks are up against. So I don't just see them as a great tag team, but on their own, both of them like lead are good enough to be at the top of their company. I think on commentary, on commentary, uh, Don Cal's like, who who does Pac remind you of? And then Jim Ross like Dynamite Kid, and then Jim and then Don Cal's like. <laughs> You're you're de definitely correcto. <laughs> Dynamite kid, just as British, mean, you know, not the tallest, but not the smallest, and definitely like more like very muscular, you power know. Call that style power flyer. Power flyer. Right, Dynamite kid, I think was the godfather of. I know, like Harley Race had like a flying headbutt, but not not Dynamite kid was. Oh, the, Dynamite kid was the best one. Was man. the first and the best at doing uh, that yeah, style. Definitely, it was. <laughs> Dynamite Kid and Pac comparison, of course, and Ray Phoenix working his magic, all the counters. Um, you know, I, I saw somebody actually post uh, a comment because they were actually upset, like, as a shoot at the unmasking of Ray Phoenix. And they were thinking, I, I was like, how can you, you know, it's a, you know, like, the, they definitely agreed to that. Because they, in, in, for those that don't know, regularly in both Triple A, lucha underground and other promotions there are like unmasking angles and there are like moments where they rip pentagon's mask or they rip ray phoenix mask or they rip the luchador's mask because that's a common occurrence in uh lucha libre hardcore matches so that way you could see the blood from coming from their head and you could see you know a little bit of like mask ripping just a it's a great brutal sight so I'm surprised, like, I know they didn't go that angle, but the unmasking, like, you know, the very, you know, heel type thing, but they were really upset with it as a, as a shoot. I was like, what? You know? Well, because you can remind you, I mean, it's, uh, when here in the States is non-traditional, but in, in Mexico, in Lucha Libre, it's tradition. Right? You know, that's the different, for those who don't know that obviously if you lose, if you take off the mask, if you take off the mask, you can 
disqualified. But if it's a mask, if it's a mask, and if you lose, you have to take off your mask. You know, there's certain traditional, you know, that are in, in Lucha Libre, especially Consejo Mundial, Triple A, and such, and such, and such. But um, it just the crash, yeah, Lucha Libre, crash yeah. as well. It just you know, people are not really familiar with familiar with that, which is they should be. I mean, it, it's been here in the states before. It's been done in WWE as well, as well. Uh, so, uh, but overall, I did like it. So. Definitely. I mean, I enjoyed most of it. And then I did enjoy uh, Scalibur telling Don Callis. Well, Don Callis and telling the books. The young bus can go straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you can just tell right now that Scalibur has become like JR, like the younger version. You know, like that just that. Baby face commentary. Yes. Yeah. I love it. I fucking love it. Baby uh, face he's, color he's, commentary. But he's everything. That's why I had this argument with myself. Uh, either last episode or episode before where nobody has a real defined role at that booth, but you don't, you didn't notice it until I, at least I didn't notice it until I brought it up. I'm like Excalibur is color and play by play, but he's more the play by play guy. Right. Where JR is JR. Who's more of a kind of a color guy, but he's not, but he's not a color guy the way he was when he was sitting with Jerry Lawler, who was absolutely the color guy. You know what I'm saying? And he, and so, JR was play by play in WWE. Yeah. But he would still throw in his opinions and his criticisms, which is what a color guy does. Yeah. Um, so everyone in that booth between Skiavone, Excalibur, and JR kind of just split the roles, essentially. They just don't even – those roles almost don't even exist. Everybody does a little bit of everything, basically. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. 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 Everybody and I, I excels at both. And I love that. I and I absolutely, I, I absolutely love that because that elevates all three of them. And not only that, but it also gives more for Excalibur because it – Eventually, it's going to come down that JR is going to be like, you know, I have call it quits. I'd rather just be behind the scenes and just have Shabbat and, and Excalibur take over. And why not? I mean, this is Excalibur's opportunity to be pretty much the next um, Jim Ross, the next Mark Morano. You know, and he could be that next individual. And, and he definitely is heading towards that fast. That's Shivani, no Shivani does uh, does play by play on elevation when big shows on color. Mm -hmm. So like it just goes to show everybody pretty much excels at both. Yes, like, especially if this is like your main job, you're going to be damn good at it. Absolutely, agreed, one hundred percent. Now let's move on now with the match that I've been waiting for because I've been speaking about it for the past couple episodes that I'm not impressed, but she won me over in this match, and that is Jade Cargill defeating Red Velvet. I'm golf clap for her. I'm gonna give my opinion right now. My apologies, gentlemen, but I have to give a golf clap for her because, I mean, she won me over with this match. She sold Finally. perfectly. I told you it was gonna happen. I told you, give her more than two minutes, and something's gonna happen. This was more like a six, seven minute match, almost close to ten. Perfect. But perfect. I still enjoyed it. I still, I'm with you. I still enjoyed it. She sold perfectly, and I'm glad that it went well for her. Uh, she did felt that kick though. I know that she. That was a. That oh kick. yeah, that, that kick was nice. Yeah, that kick was nice from Red Velvet, and also gonna give to Red Velvet as well, man. That's why I'm glad she got the contract with AEW, mm -hmm. and I'm very you know happy for her and excited for her <laughs> what her future is in AEW as well. But this match overall impressed me with Jade. I like how she sold it. All you know the this the chemistry in the ring between these two athletes. Oh man, I'm, this is just the start. We've been saying it previously before. Mm -hmm about the AEW women's roster, that it's developing as it's going, and this is the right path where they're going with. And hoping we able to see more of it, more to be more actually seen on Dynamite, not just in Elevation and Dark, which is understanding because you want them to develop their character in the, in the ring and skills ability as well when they hit big TV time at TNT. So I'll pass it on to you, Money Mike. Your thoughts about this match. Yes, uh, Jade, she's you know, showing different people uh, things that she can do. Uh, she just doesn't look the part. She's, you know, working towards becoming a real force in the ring, which is what AEW needs, you know? I think uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good problem to have where there's a, num a number of I contenders. Love that. I love how you put that. That's so for for so Sheeta, nice. right? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's a great problem to have. You know, all these contenders, any one of them can take the title from her and run with the division. So, uh, man, you know, and I hear there's that some more names are available. So who knows? Maybe some more names will be chucked on in there. 
that's the basis of a of a division of a stack division contenders. All right, MGC. I gotta say, Jade Jade Cargill. I guess she's gonna fulfill that role of the. I don't know what the female equivalent of Haas is. You know, if they're Chris, would you like Haas? Because I love that. Hold on. Like when Haas was singles, not when he was in. Uh, with Del- with no, I know the term Haas, like H O. Oh, you mean like like old Haas, like the like El Jefe? Like, like what a Haas is in like just the big guy, you yeah, know? Yeah, that's what I thought you meant. I know what you mean. Mm. Um, female equivalent I'm in China at the at, when she had her IC run. Nia Jax, unfortunately. Tamina. No, I was I was just asking the term, not the wrestlers. Oh. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh well. Okay. So here, listen. Uh, there is a perfect way to put what you're trying. You're trying to describe who is like uh, an alpha female who's a boss lady who's a you know like a female. I guess like heel hoss. Female. I got it. Check so, this out. Ready? Uh, I do believe Jade Cargill was very sincere when she said this, but she's just not a bitch. She is the bitch. <laughs> right. That's uh, kind of like I get. Uh, you could kind of because right now I'm kind of seeing her as like the Lance Archer of the female division. I guess because she's like the tall. I guess the tallest one. Uh, most muscular. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta. I, mean, okay. so, I don't know about her versus Scantlander, um, which is a matchup I want to. I want to see. But height, I think that that might be sooner than we think. I think that. I, I did look up. I'm, I'm weird like this. I'll look up heights and stats on people, and I think Scantlander is five eleven, and Cargill's like five nine, five ten. A lot shorter than I thought, but she wears those. Really? those yeah, because those boots has a little like, your eyes on her that gives yeah. you up mm-hmm. high. I I think it might happen, but I I it might not happen on Dynamite though. It might happen on Elevation or Dark. Just no, to kind of have them feel, no, feel each other out. Car, they're not putting their money Cargill down there. Um, in my opinion, they gotta. I mean, Anthony Agogo is also pretty. You know, like we'll get to him in a minute. But I was just talking about you're talking about like money people because Anthony right. Agogo's commentary on Dark and he's he's been on like TV in England and he's hosted TV shows. He's a big media like Five, nine. Okay, and then Cargill. Keep going. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. yeah. I think Agogo is a very media guy, so I guess Fine maybe day. like Cargill darker Cargill. elevation for Cargill and and maybe Cargill and and Statlander to kind of work like get a feel of each other, kind of to spark their feud, and then maybe like I don't know the when it comes to a head they could have like a special stipulation match when they're oh my head's exploding. Just had a much better idea than Chris Gannon. Oh, Okay, yeah, but so basically, oh I'm I need to Tony Khan. I hadn't I haven't watched speed dial. Who are you thinking, Chris? Sonny Kiss. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Yeah. I'm not even joking. He he has done intergender matches. Yes. Um, he obviously we know that he that he can go by any pronoun at any given moment. He prefers he, she, they, them. Um yeah, I would love that match. That would be great. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where does Nyla Rose fit in all this? Yeah, there's the excuse me. <laughs> Bro, because <laughs> Nyla's a face now, sort of. She's kind of working. She's kind of earning her face shift um, through her work ethic, in my opinion. People are starting mm. to appreciate her in-ring ability, and then they're starting to cheer that, and not just her, you know, her heelness, which she absolutely has. Yeah. But even now, with her losing a couple of matches and taking some pretty insane bumps recently, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of starting to root for Nyla, like. I would love that. Put her in a face position, have her dump Vicky. You know, you know, I'll say this straight out, like just uh, about the whole female division, like right away. I think, I think they're ready for Britt Baker to kind of be the, the female version of her, of her boyfriend over in uh, AEW. Just be kind of the, yeah. And have, and have put the belt on her and maybe she could hold that belt for maybe like almost a year and, and two Autumn months. Women haven't held it very long. If you look at the record link, it's not not a lot of dominant title reigns. She has been, I guess, I guess the longest so longest. far. So I guess because Brit's already, I, she's more than earned it. So I guess they're put the belt on Brit next, and then maybe like build everybody up, like facing her in the meantime. Have, and have kinda, Reba kind of in the Maurice position where um, she kind of buys her way out of fighting. You know, like she's like a, a, a not a defending champion. She wiggles her way out of wins and losses and avoiding losing the title. It's like it's like Maki Ito is going to be Kyle O'Reilly. She's yeah, going to be like, Air Guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Air like, Guitar well, Maki Ito. It's like, oh, I will give you a title shot if you can beat Reba. And then, you yeah. Know, and stuff like that. And like completely just like the Miz losing his title reign. 
um, as a heel, I believe it was, I think it was might've been an intercontinental title reign where he was getting other people to do his dirty work for him. And, you know, Maurice was Yeah, like, Britt's a good stable leader. So I guess she's, I guess in the meantime, and then like, you know, you could have her have maybe Jade Cargo could be a tweener or something like that, or just do whatever. So there's a lot of, I guess there's a lot of room for growth right now, you know? There's yeah. a, there's so much room oh, for yeah. growth and yeah. so and there's only, not, there's only room for growth. Yeah, Dark and Elevation and and Dynamite are all worth watching right now just cuz not the the whole there there you know there isn't like like the people that are on Dark and Elevation are going to be on Dynamite a lot sooner than we think. So well, I'll also remind you that like even though Chris you said you do not want Jade on Elevation or Dark but it has to be the reason why I said because this is okay. We saw what Brit just if you know she brought up the ranking system why she wrestled twice in a week you know not on dynamite she wrestled on elevation and dark this past week two days in a row so i guess now they're they're counting the matches from elevation and dark for those rankings now and what i like about it is now that brit is now putting more attention to the ranking system that AEW does not focus on and now we're seeing that uh so yes it, one thing that caught me really like wait a minute why is Jay, Red Velvet's on top of her, and like, wait a minute, how they're ranking this, you know, so that's the one thing that kind of threw me off, but I love the fact that she's, it's how you, we said this prior before, previously, in the previous episodes, eventually, Britt Baker's going to be the world champ, and then it's heading that direction, it's heading toward that direction, right, so, well, what, I, what I meant by not having her on darker elevate, I mean, I don't want a majority of the story fleshed out for her there. No, I, I get you, but it's it just to develop her in the ring. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely give her ring time there, but if she's going to be in a storyline, I would rather that be on Dynamite. But you can get her comfortable, obviously, give her as much ring time as possible, put her on both shows. I think they film all three of them in the same day or something, or maybe, yeah. like, across two days. Yeah, that's totally cool. I just don't want, like, a, a major storyline with her involved fleshing itself out there oh that's no I, I i agree 100 percent of that yeah it should be focused more on dynamite because that's where you can okay we can tell what's going on but yeah great job for jay great job great thank job. you for finally coming around man i know I, I i don't think i had a lot of responsibility with uh mike coming over to to aew i definitely was like come to the dark side come to the dark side but i think he moved on his own <laughs> yeah he, I, what did i say last <laughs> week my, my heart my heart was open Yes, my heart is open. Heart was open to coming over to AEW, and I think I kind of got you on the J thing. So yeah, I appreciate it. Well, yeah, my heart was open, so I appreciate you. <laughs> I should get that if I didn't already have like a chest tattoo. I should. Hey, just get should. Like, my heart is open. Well, heart is open. I gotta say, on the on the reverse side of it, I re I've been really enjoying NXT these past four weeks. Yeah. So like yeah. on the on the other side of it, but we'll we'll dive into that once we get to it. But absolutely. I'll tell you why. Uh, absolutely. All right, and then we did see the uh, debut of Anthony Agogo. That sucker punch, bang that jam! Oh, that uppercut! That wasn't even a sucker punch. That was uh, just a right hook, cut, a solar cut. cut. Oh, oh my god, that, they look horrible. But oh, yeah. I want to get your guys' thoughts for the match to end this quick. I mean, we do know his credentials: former Olympic boxer, and is uh, a real former Olympic boxer, not like other, you know, quote unquote like, ones. <laughs> Here's a throwback, like Mark Merrow. Thank you. He had a boxing gimmick, but he was only a Golden Gloves boxer, just like which, Baron Corbin, which would still beat my ass. But that's a that's a tough man challenge. It's a glorified tough man. Anybody can come in and win that. Obviously, you have to have skill to do so. Mm -hmm. But there, if you're going to give him a gimmick, just maybe up the credentials a little bit. Where with yeah. a go go, I mean, the only thing they didn't do to his gimmick was lie about which medal he won in the Olympics. But everything else is true. Very very true. Now here's the biggest question for you, gentlemen. So. A lot of people backlash because of this debut. 50-50. Uh, one was like, that's it. I think we should get more out of this. Uh, at least a body slam or, or elbow drop. Or people are actually enjoying it. They're like, oh, yes, I. this is how you build this character. He's a former boxer. He needs to be built this type of way to develop, you know, that boxing character. Yeah, he's supposed to be the badass who can hurt you. So I'll go with you. MGC, I want to hear your thoughts about this one. So the Anthony Agogo match, like I was especially talking about, like he he's he's not just a boxer; he's also like a TV personality, and he's hosted shows and different different things, reality shows, game shows, stuff like that. Anthony and Anthony Agogo, he, he's even on commentary on Dark too, so he's even great there. He's a great talker, you know. I want, I definitely want to see him on the mic more, you know. 
but overall, you know, I, you know, I was going to bring up Rocky Johnson, you know, the kind of, cause he had the boxing gimmick, but he was mm. an actual boxer, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I kind of like wrestlers with the boxing gimmick cause it gives a different dimension to the match. Cause like, like, even though it's like, you don't have to be big or do these certain moves or you don't have to fly. You can just cause the fact that they know you're a legit boxer, like simple punches, are made more interesting because oh my god those punches must really hurt punches work as finishers on the fact that you're you are a boxer you know or just like punch to the face knock out of course he's a boxer you know it's a it works as a finisher because he's a he's a boxer that you know you say it's like oh that doesn't look like it hurts but in real life you know <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna hurt like hell oh yeah definitely director um, I lost my screen. There it is. Uh, I loved this because so many times you have somebody with credentials coming in in combat athletes and they don't utilize that. Um, some great examples of them actually doing that was obviously Rhonda came in. She used her judo. She used some of her jiu-jitsu, but they gave her like a shitty armbar. I don't know why. They gave her some weird armbar that just looked bad. Um, Ken Shamrock came in. He used an ankle lock, which was a move he used a lot in UFC. Brock Lesnar, after he became an MMA fighter, kind of altered his professional wrestling moveset to be more MMA-oriented. But then you get people who are, like, kickboxers who don't kickbox or, like, they don't utilize that thing that they're known for outside of pro wrestling. This was perfect. This was, this was like, oh, shit. This made, this made it look like a professional wrestler versus a guy who didn't give a shit about the, the, the performance. He's like, you know, I'm a boxer. You're a pro wrestler. This is how this would go down in real life. I like that. That's exactly what they should have done. If that guy hit anybody with one punch anywhere, he would have done that to them. And they are selling that aspect of what he can do. Very shooty. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It was absolutely uh, very shoot. Um, yeah, one and done punch, man. That's the way it should be uh, with a character like that who's young and scary. And because it's never really been done before, where a boxer just comes in, I mean, besides poor Bart Gunn, where a boxer actually comes in and lays someone out, Obviously, that was an actual shoot, but this is a simulated shoot, and uh, I love it. I, I, I don't think that you need to put him through, like, catch his catch can wrestling or running the ropes. Like, well, nah, man. Chris, you know, I think it will make uh, things interesting when he goes up against the top guys later on. So, much yeah, later on. but she'll probably, they'll probably write into the storyline, like, um, maybe in two or three fights or wrestling matches. Maybe he does get a loss by a surprise roll up. He's like, shit, I might have to learn some ground game. You know, I'll hoist Gracie and anyone who fought him back in the day. Or um, he goes so, up against a hardcore guy and then he gets the trash can. Yeah, to the, you know, he is at the Nightmare Factory or whatever whatever it is now that he left, the QT, QT, QT Pies Factory. Um. <laughs> you know what? I think, I think I know who the, yeah, the factory. It's like, it's got a theme song. I think an, an interesting opponent for Anthony Agogo would be uh, John Moxley. I think later down, later on down the line. Yeah, yeah I, I think you can go that. through whatever that uh, Cesar Bernoni crew is. You might go through like JD Drake or um, the other one. I don't know who the other guy was. Cesar Bernoni. Who? Cesar Bernoni and oh, like, Ryan Nemes. That one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gulf White. Got yeah. it. Yeah. I think you might tear through those guys, maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I love it. I. I don't know why people wouldn't see it the way I just saw it, so I'm sorry. I agree. Money Mike. So we had two debuts this week of people that were making their in-ring debuts. He was one of them on the AEW side. But on the flip side, on WWE at WrestleMania, we had Omas, right? Two different, you know, people making their debuts. But I can't, there, there's just something about Ogogo that I saw right away that tells me that he's already preparing. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't know his credentials. I don't know. I'm not familiar with his boxing career, but I have, I have high hopes for what he can bring to the ring in the future. Uh, and, and it leaves you wanting more, you know, the shorter matches. There's a gentleman by the name of Goldberg that started that way. Mm. And right. So, you know, it, it builds the intrigue, you know, so hopefully by the time that there is a full-on match, uh, he's able to deliver a, a, a great match, you know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And he, he seems like he's 
getting ready. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. He's getting ready to be a cutie pie, and he's ready to take <laughs> over that cutie pie. So your heart is open, Mike. Your heart is open. <laughs> All of it. Oh, there you go. Take it. <laughs> <That's> there. <laughs> well, yours, cutie. <laughs> wow. A little, a little too much, almost. <laughs> that, that would, Chris, you know, if, if a baby face that's up against cute. QT Marshall stable doesn't use that as like all right all cute QT and your cutie pies you know right that sounds that sounds like a mock stink or something yeah yeah that would be that would be a really good thing for a baby faces to use like you could take that from us <laughs> it's like all you, all you cutie pies looking for <laughs> at the cutie pie gym you know <laughs> now that we have um of course, the good joke. The good joke. Greatest Jericho of the all time. Good joke. Greatest Jericho of all time. Zach Smartwood. Special enforcer. Of course. You need a mic, you know. Make me mic tight. Yeah. Mic tight. <laughs> yeah. He's a poet. He's a professional poet. <laughs> yeah. My back is broken. But, he, but yes. Man, I, I want to get this off my chest very briefly. This reminds me of back in the Attitude Era's days. Rough hitting match between both of these individuals. I love it. Jericho's a good joke. Old school classic. Hard hitting. You could just see it. And then those chops. Amazing. I loved it. Laughed my ass off when uh, Cash Wheeler got his ass knocked out. He sold it very clean. I love it. Just speaking just stiff. I, <laughs> I love that part. Um, the course of a good joke, getting that win with the Judas effect. Hey, and I gotta give the hard one. He took that Judas effect like wow, yeah, big wind up on it, too. Yes, I love it. I enjoyed every bit of it. So, go ahead, director. The floor is yours. Thoughts about that match? <laughs> get rewind real quick to the MJF promo with Tyson, which was awesome. Tyson responded to everything very naturally, everything seemed realistic. Uh, it didn't seem like he was buying any of MJF's stick, which worries me a little bit. Uh, I Everybody would just player. wanted that punch to fly, just like right away. Yeah, MJF, eat it. it. I, I think there's a reason it didn't. Um, we all know what happened in WrestleMania 14. Tyson, right hand, right hand, knocks out Shawn Michaels, who he was boys with up until the end of that match. I, I wouldn't put it past Tyson to go where the money is. I know he's got more money than God, but in the realm of AEW... Uh, I can see him going with Pinnacle at some point. Um, yeah, but Tyson's character, I mean, it's him. He didn't stutter. He didn't uh, drag. The promo was great. The match itself, forwarding to the match, was good also. Uh, it was kind of like a halftime main event. I was like, is this the main event already? And I saw there was like another hour left, 30 minutes left. I'm like, oh, shit. All right. Um, yeah, it was good. Solid match. Um, I mean, obviously, it all it did was – put a win and loss column in the pinnacle versus inner circle record. Um, as far as matchups go, of course, Jericho was going to be Darsh, Darshwood, the Darman, uh, Dallywood, Bollywood guy. Um, because that guy's never done a singles match in his, in, you know, the past like five, six years, I think. So on paper, obviously Jericho was going to win. And I didn't think a Tyson turn would have happened that soon. If it was going to happen, uh, we got to see what the next matchup is. Um, it's probably going to be the not bald rev, 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 relevation guy versus like Sammy. That'd be cool. I don't know what they're called anymore, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're they're making their names. Dealers, their names dealers. don't make any sense, dude. It's Dax Harwood and Josh Near. Well, Dash Dash Wilder. Dash Wilder well, and, and Josh Jimmy, Waxwood. Cash, Cash, Dash Dax Wilder, Harwood and Dash Wilder. Cash, Cash Wheeler and uh, Aiden English. I don't know. In the <laughs> Revol Cash Revolution Wheeler and Dax Harwood. <laughs> Revelationaries? <laughs> Free the Revelationaries? I'm sorry, bros. I want to know, but you're fucking making these names up, dude. It's I, like... <laughs> they're silly names, bro. They're not paper good names. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm trying my best. I don't know what they were called in NXT either because they did the same thing back then. Cash uh, Wheeler and Dax Harwood? Or Dax Wheeler and Cash Harwood? Like, they sound like street names from 1925. <laughs> <laughs> like a Bob fucking style, right? Like Bob style. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's just, oh, man. Um, 
I love him as a team, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's, we're just going to have a lot of, like, singles matches between the two. They're going to be a tally, and then they're going to cultivate it, you know, add blood and guts in some crazy, hopefully, barn burner five versus five, Daly's plays type of deal. Cross his fingers. It's Stampede 2. I think that's where it looks like it's heading. Like a, like a less comedy version of it, too. Because the first one was amazing but hilarious. Where this one should be amazing but deadly. Just like that locker room brawl they had last week. Which yeah. was five stars. One of the best backstage segments of all time. Yeah. In AEW. Money I, Mike. No, I say all time. One of the best of all time for a backstage brawl. Okay. <laughs> I've seen them all, man. This is just my opinion. If you guys have a different, different opinion, right if you guys have a different opinion, comment right below and see if you want to debate with Mr. Director here. You, you can comment up above too, by the way. There's a whole <laughs> hidden section right here. <laughs> let me let me just forward this video to George. Can I do that? <laughs> can I make that? <laughs> uh, I was just I'm just saying. I feel like he might have a little a thing or two to say about that, but I do agree, Chris. My goodness. I've seen the revival FTR for many years now, and I still don't know their names up until probably a couple of weeks ago, really. Yeah, I know like the syllables. I just don't know in what order and where they go. Right. Dax and Cash. Yes, I know it's Dax and Cash, but which one's Dax and which one's Cash? That's some. I'm, but is I'm, that the NXT name or is that the AEW names? AEW. AEW. AEW is yeah. Dax and Cash. Dash and in, in the other one is. is... <laughs> Oh, no, I love it. Yeah. Cash is, and Dax and Dash and Cash. Dash know. is 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 WWE NXT. No, it's not. It's AEW. Cash. Dash and No, Cash. I said Dash, Wait. not Dax. Wait, did Cash become Dash? <laughs> Wait, Cash what? is Dax, right? So C and D. Dash is Dax and Max is is Slash. For for anybody for anybody tuning in right now. We had to snip out an hour of this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the edited version. <laughs> this is the edited version. You're, you're getting the condensed version of this of this episode. <laughs> episode 50 just became mostly the revival's names. Um, yeah, wax Hard oh, Floor. Wax Hard, wait, Wax right. Hard Floor? Dash Wild. In, in, cash Hard Floor in, 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 in Dash. <laughs> Dash incredible. <laughs> Cash Cash Wheeler is the one with hair. Dax is the one who's who shaved. Bald. I've lost. You got uh, that. You lost. Yeah. You gotta <laughs> continue. Continue. All, all in all, I enjoyed the segment. Uh, so far, I'm enjoying the, the pineapple versus the inner circle. Uh, <laughs> you know, all that good stuff. It, it, pinnacle. It's, it's pinnacle. A, there you go, the pinnacle. I thought it was premiere for like a whole episode. So. <laughs> the, pon name. the pontoon bridge, the back oh shavers. God. I love that. <laughs> the so back yes, ba Blood and guts can't get here soon enough. I, I would say. Seriously, it's like it's like uh, May eighteenth, May eighth, something like that. It's like a month, less than a month or so. May second. Oh, okay. Is it second or fifth? Second. We, we like also Saturday. don't know. Okay, we, so we, we don't. Saturday should be a Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. I believe so, but yeah, Con yeah. Continue. Go ahead, my pilot. Just go ahead. No, no, no. That was, that was it. Oh, okay. that was it. That was it. All right, MGC. Oh, he just agreed with me that the names are terrible. I love it. <laughs> That's all we were getting to. MGC. I gotta say, um, when it comes to Mike Tyson, you know, like everybody, when when during that opening promo, everybody was like, you know. They were they were thinking like Mike Tyson was like man just please punch punch MJF everybody was like begging for it you know but when it comes to that I gotta say that um oh man it didn't take <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't get the words in uh, into it tell, tell us what does it say? it says now I'm pissed off <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious now I'm pissed off. If he me up, I'm gonna whoop your ass. You know. <laughs> he might watch this. You better be careful. Oh yes, he'll be. Oh, he'll so everybody does the impersonations these he days. He lives a block away from at least me and Ivan, so careful. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm definitely a poet now. When when I appear on the roast of of James Franco, you know that's that's what it's all about. You know, the pinnacle they're going down at blood and guts. Maybe I'll be special enforcer referee. You know, we'll do. All kinds of things. 
pretty funny. I don't, I don't know, man. He's gonna send his tiger to go to go eat you, man. Oh, yeah, I want to be friendly to the tiger. You definitely animal rights is how we do it here in in Rock. Get Alan from the hey, help you. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's move on now. Let's go ahead and move on with, of course, your one and only. Bing. It's a, it's a short subject. She got a she got a quick win over uh, Amber Nova, who is friends of uh, George. Just had her on George or Jofo. Just had her on, right? Um, George Mackay. Shout out to Straight Talk, Straight Talk Wrestling. Wrestling the man right. right there, man and the girl. His his daughter is running that whole show. Don't tell him that though. <laughs> you know, yeah, you'll, you'll see that. Yeah, the, I know. But, she is. but we know she is. We, we 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 all know she is. She is the queen yeah. of podcast. She but is. yes, versus Amber Amber Nova. Yes, that's yeah. Good. good to see. Good to see that match. Uh, Chris looked good. Um, that's about it, man. I, it was just a welcome back and a welcome to the company type of match. It wasn't too long. Nothing really exciting or disappointing about it. Just you know, nice little time filler. That's all right, it. MGC. Yeah, Chris Statlander, it's 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 like her comeback. I guess it's the first step towards, you know, being back in the ring. I think of whenever wrestlers come back from injuries and they got to show what they're made of. So that's definitely like there. Like it, it kind of reminds me of when Lita made her comeback after her injury and she was like power bombing, like Lita Did have, bombs. Like, the same injury too. Did she have like a shoulder issue? Or I'm not it, sure. I'm not sure her back's messed up too, right? It anyway. was it was something really bad that put her out for a long, long time. Like right. even longer than Statlander was out. So it was like, where was Lita? And then you know she she was power bombing girls in this in this in this free for all. So you know the like emit that you know I I like how she came back at the pay per view, and I kind of hope to see her in a longer match like next week or something like that. So yeah, definitely. I, Money Mike. I might be the minority here, but I feel that she needs to kind of change her ring attire or her or her look to kind of go more towards the best friends to fit oh, in I that agree. group. Um, maybe like a you know, because they wear t-shirts and more like a casual like, look. She was you know? she was using their theme song instead of her own. That's right, the one because she's part she of was that using, group. She was using Orange's theme song because best friends is the. Uh, Bounce, 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 the best friend. But I believe it's now pixies. it's it's everybody's now. Oh, yeah, is it? So yeah. The stable, because oh, the, they're officially stable. a stable but at see, the moment. But see, here, here's the reason why I feel that they, they won't go that direction for her, Mike. The fact mm-hmm. is you have two best friends. You have, uh, you know, the assumption that like, you're a pothead or something. Oh, they're like staring at the stars, alien, there she that. And there she is. Oh, I'm your best friend. Type of like E.T. style. Oh, I think, I think okay. they wanted to also do like... A, because they did Rick and Morty, remember, in that one episode of, of Dynamite. So they mm-hmm. want to continue with the UFO Rick and Morty type thing. I, I, I would th- – that actually sounds really cool. And I don't think that they've kind of played to that. But okay. if they did, if they did, oh, you know what they say. My heart is open. <laughs> That's there right. you go. I think my heart is open. I think if they do another Rick and Morty thing, I think Statlander might be Summer. She's going to be Summer, and then, you know, they're going to do what they... And then, like, two Ricks, and then, you know, I think... What was it? Chuck was Morty last time? I think Chuck was Morty, and then and then Trevor... I mean, yeah, Trent, Trent and, Trent and uh, Ca- Orange Cassidy were both Rick. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the one episode of Dynamite. <laughs> All right. And then we have Christian Cage. The Cage, of course. Uh, coming out, wanted to, you know... Have an open challenge, but Team Taz came out and interrupted him. Of course, Taz demanded a yes or no answer, and Christian told him no. Next thing you know, Will Hobbs beat his ass. And we're going to have a match next week with Christian Cage and Will Hobbs. And be prior to that, we did see a little, you know, debate about, you know, Christian coming in. Ricky Starks was left behind, and you know, Brian Cage. I think we're going to see. A uh, new tag team called the Cages. That's what I think we might have to see. We're gonna see that. <laughs> B- BNC yes. Cage Factory. Yeah, BNC. Yeah, BCC. <laughs> Brian Kristen Cages. So we might see that. We might see that happening coming up. I think most definitely we're seeing Brian Cage turning face on them. Gonna probably go ahead and save Christian uh, next week. This I'm giving my my theory right now. They're gonna Brian Cage is gonna go face next week. He's going to turn his back on Team Taz starting next week. 
I'm calling it right now. First. I don't think it'll be as early as next week. I mean, but a hint I, at least, right? I, yeah, a hint. So, and we're going to get more and more and more, and it's going to start building up to the to the cages, you know? Uh, <laughs> hey, I mean, we all we all said it. We, we made uh, this joke. Was it Brian yeah. Cage with, with uh, Christian Cage? And I forgot who else, who else has a Ethan, Ethan Page and, and Ethan Adam Page. Page. E- and Adam Page. Page. And, and, well, there's there also Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, you know. fuck, yes, there is. <laughs> and Johnny Cage. Finish and freaking, freaking the, referee, the referee's dressed as a mage. And then they got, and then everybody has to rub sage on themselves. Oh, Jesus Christ. You're fine. <laughs> Being rage in the cage, right? Sage. Penis in your anus. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> the Rock is like, I don't care if it's Hell in a Cell, Rage in a Cage, or Penis in Your Anus. You know. <laughs> Episode fifty, folks. There you go. Hey, you, hey, you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And thank I'm you the for sober one, by the way. I'm, I'm always, I'm also mostly sober. I'm always, <laughs> very, very rarely do I, do I consume uh, beverages during? Because this is like driving to me. Well, this is episode. 50. <laughs> <laughs> I only have milk in here. I, I save right. it for for after. Did also, I, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> little the old grandfather's whiskey. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> what a yes. Uh, yeah, money. Mike, go ahead. Take the floor is yours in this one. No, basically that's it. You know, cage, page, cage, and the other page too. Make it happen. It's happening. I feel it. I feel it. Yeah, literally okay. is. It's going to be Christian Cage versus Brian Cage, like, I think next week already. Or at least, like, like a week down. He might go through other members of Team Taz before he I gets I think to Cage it. will be the last one. Yeah, that, that actually makes sense. They're mm-hmm. going to they're gonna drag on his rivalry with Team Taz until, you know, he moves on to Kenny and, and, and next, uh, next level oh. consciousness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Director. God damn was that shoot that shoot banter back and forth between Cage and Taz like I feel like it wasn't scripted and they both kind of took it a little too personally and kind of reacted <laughs> and such I I don't know if they knew what each other were going to say but that line of about Taz, I'm glad you're standing on the third step so we can see eye to eye. And Taz was like, "Listen here, you." And the Taz was like, "Listen here, you bag of shit." And I was like, "Whoa, <laughs> bro, it's just fake." I don't think either one of them knew that they were going to say. It. I think Taz like legit. Got to make it down. convincing. Yeah, gotta... I was convinced for sure. And then like, I never liked you on Monday with that schmuck friend of yours. Anyways, I'm like, dude, all right, this is who carries cool. you. I'm you a know. little uncomfortable right about now. Um. Yeah, there was some awkwardness backstage with the uh, Ricky Starks, Taz, Brian Cage thing where it almost seemed like Taz was going to kick out Ricky Starks a little bit and Brian Cage was going to be the one that kind of went back to Taz. I don't know. It was like a weird little vibe I got. But yeah, Cage is going to go th- – Christian Cage, Christian is going to go through Will Hobbs, probably go through Ricky Starks, and then they're probably going to send Brian Cage in there to help and then he's not going to help and that might be the end of it. And then we might get Cage versus Cage um, for a title shot. That would be you know, fantastic. I got a question for everybody. When do you think when when do you think we're going to see Hooks debut? Because like you, I don't even know if he's wrestled ever. I I just don't know. He may have. I just don't he's know. still in training, so he's yeah. not even uh, yeah. there yet. He's not. They're there. having him do like like punch random people, just kind of hang around. You know. Yeah, he's he's a plant essentially. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything about the, the guy. I've never seen him in ring. I don't know what he looks like without his. He's uh, Taz's son. On. Yeah, no, I know that. Jesus Christ! I no, 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 no. I was going to say that he's he's been training. He's been training. I know you haven't seen him. Well, no, actually, one time without without the without the hoodie, one time a while back. I had to well, look at right. What I'm saying is, like, maybe he could job. Training. Maybe he could job on dark a few times. Yeah, he's then. definitely going to not job on dark for sure. I think he's definitely going to win on dark. Um, I just don't know, like, his physique because he's always wearing, like, the sweatsuit with the towel, you know. Mm. Um, so I don't know anything about him besides his Taz's son and what his name is. And he's named after the city Taz grew up in, Red Hook. Yeah. So from Red Hook, Brooklyn. Um, dun, Taz. Dun, 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 um, yeah, that's where I think that should go. Whatever I just said about Cage and Cage having their title shot for, I mean, maybe not even for the Kenny title. It might be for the Dynamite title, which would be fantastic, or the TNT title. I think that's a more realistic... Um, you can kind of 
not rush that, but get to that destination a lot quicker than painting the picture of sending either Cage up to Kenny. I think um, send either one of them to Darby's direction, and you can have that storyline wrapped up in the next two months. Mm. MGC, do you agree with that? Yeah, it's possible because, you know, I, I you got to think of who Dar you could put Darby up against pretty much. Because, like, you Everyone, know. Which is what he wants to do. And I look at yeah. Him, kind of the old John Cena open challenge. Where John Cena, I mean, straight up day in, day out, when he was not part-timing, defended that title like 35 times in a row. It was pretty fantastic. Mm, okay. Well, definitely, speaking of Darby, let's talk about that main event. Here we go. Here we go. That's right. Go the ring. That's right. Here we go. There you go. Sorry, sorry, Frank. Sorry, but yeah, <laughs> uh, that was you know dedicated to you, brother. Much love. Shout out to Joe from the Ring Podcast, and also to the Dirty Heels Podcast as well. You got to give the people what they want. Mm -hmm. But yes, Darby Allen defeating Matt Hardy. <laughs> With, alongside with the Hardy Party, with the Dark Order, with Stang, with Lance. So much bra for us everywhere. Son of a bitch. I mean, I hate to... Mm, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do this. Do ah! this, is, this is just do it. I'm just, son of a bitch. I, this is the second time I agree with this piece of shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I'm not going to say his name. Worlds are fighting right now. Uh, uh, continent. Continents hitting each other right now. He has a point of Pangea. yes, another piece of shit. I uh, yeah, mainly him too. But I do agree with the brawl for all every fucking week, especially for the TNT title, is being redundant over and over and over and over. It gets boring after a while because like you make it seem like your champion TNT champion can't do it on his own. And this is what we talked about previously prior last week on 49, 48. We discussed about this, that this, I'm sorry. Like I said, I am a big fan of Darby, but he needs to drop the belt. I'm, or he needs to, they need to make him something more relevant because seeing, seeing him get his ass whooped every week by week, it's boring. Don't get me wrong. I, it was a great match. Not, I'm not giving it a five beers and all that. It's uh, four, <laughs> four for me, four beers for me. It was great. A great ending towards it. Uh, it's just, for me, they need to move forward or, or develop his, like his character, make him be the aggressor of what I said before, because this is getting boring. It is. It, it just, for me, it is. It's like too many brawl for alls every main event, too many, you know, interferences. They, they need to figure out a way how to get away from that here and there, not having every week, especially for the TNT title. And then, and then also, I mean, we're already seeing Lance and Sting. So, I, like how we said it before, um, I think I believe Mike said or and Chris said, or both of you guys said it that yeah, it looks like it'll be Lance who's going to be up upcoming ones taking that title, but he's going to go through Sting to get to that title. So we'll eventually see that down the line that Sting will have to wrestle. Uh, Lance Archer, which I said, I, I don't know, you guys said, oh, you don't like that, Ivan? Of course, I don't because I'm a person. I have feelings. You know, my heart is open because I have feelings. Hope you understand that because it's staying. Uh, but I don't know. That's how I feel about that match, but overall, it was great. So I'll go with you, Money Mike. Talk to me about that one. I sat there and I'm a, I'm a Darby guy, sure, as much as the next girl or guy, whatever. Um, <laughs> so I, I sat there and I was like, I want him to lose. I want him to lose that title. It's just not interest. The, the title ring is not interesting. Uh, last week I compared, uh, Darby Allen's reign versus Johnny Gargano, you know, the smaller guy, you know, going up against uh, bigger guys and how Gargano's match at takeover was way more interesting than Darby's past few title defenses. And it's because every single Darby title defense has been pretty much the same thing. Him getting beat up, you mm -hmm. know, and then uh, so many close finishes that could finish pretty much anybody else. And he just finds a way. And yes, sure, a champion finds a way, but it's just redundant. It ha it's, it's continuing on every week. And I just found myself wanting him to lose the belt to Matt Hardy. 
So that way Darby could chase it for a bit, you know? There you go. How was that? Awesome. Director, um, I agree with every point of view that Mike brought up, but Except. I'm s- slightly less irritated by the continuing of the storyline. That doesn't mean that I'm not over it or anything like that, which I'm like, where is it going? Um, I like that Matt Hardy chose to not have private party with him. I think he technically banned them himself. He's like, I want to do this by myself. But then if you look at Matt Hardy's resume, like he's been through so much worse in those TLC matches to destroy Darby Allen and then just lose to a coffin drop at the end of it, a bump much it was, a, it was a good bump. It was a solid bump. But to, like, lose like that when he's been through so much worse and won, maybe they're playing that he's old and Darby's the new kid. Obviously, that's what they're doing is the ultimate underdog. But what's the end goal? Is Darby someday going to put on, like, 100 pounds and be Brock Lesnar? No. Where uh, is he going to be undefeated? No, that's already not happening. Like, I, I don't know what the end game is for the Darby character. Um, and that, that's fine. I'm not trying to rush a storyline. I know – He's only been wrestling for three years, and two of those have been in AEW, which is wild. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not like extremely annoyed by it, but I'm with Mike. With like, I'm like, I need something to happen. I need it to just phase two or three of whatever the fuck this this, this is right now. That's it. MGC. Oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be Lance Archer for sure. Lance Archer is gonna throw him off the roof or something, like of the Daily's place, like they're gonna or, take or into after. outer space. No, yeah, like. Send him on a Chris Gallagher spaceship. Like, I really think it's Domino. like a Spider Man thing they're kind of going for with Darby. Like, I like that analogy. Because because Spider Man's often okay, like Spider Man one or two, the cartoon <laughs> show. Oh, they made a cartoon out not of that? not the Toby movie, not the to- not none of the movies. Movie? I'd say this is the the Fox the yeah, Fox cartoon the show, the Fox Eleven cartoon show. Because I remember Spider Man was always like kind of up against the fence. He's not really, he wasn't really dominant. So, you know, yeah. Spider Man, like, even in his social life, you know, kind of has it like, you know, oh, yeah. Like, Bruce Wayne's got money. Superman's got a job as, as a, as a, as a pretty solid job in his own apartment. Spider Man's like, had good grades. Yeah. He had good grades and he uh, doesn't have any family, you know, other than his aunt. Poor Uncle Ben. Rest in peace. Yeah. I love your rice. Uncle Ben. Great power comes great rice, you know. <laughs> ah, delicious. Uh, but, yes. But no, man. but uh, but I gotta <laughs> say, da- with Darby, um, I think I I actually got an interesting idea. Rather than Lance Archer, I'd say probably after Blood and Guts, MJF would be a good uh for that TNT title. That's really good for that's a really good belt for factions because of how Brody ran with the TNT title and kind of elevated the dark yeah, order. Like three weeks, man. He defended it like once. They gotta stop considering him the best TNT champion. Cody Rhodes defended that thing a lot more and had a longer. Time I was saying on. it elevated the faction, but not rather than Brody. Yeah. So I think the beating you put on Cody when he won it in like twelve seconds, I think that yeah. was the establishing factor of that belt. Yeah. So I think I think what should happen should be I guess MJF could take it off of Darby in a very heinous way, and then he could hold on to it for a good amount of what. Once again, let's have another long running champion to build up baby faces. Yeah, I like for. that. I actually like that more than the Lance Archer thing. Lance Lance Archer. Because because once again, MJF looks up to those you know those heel Intercontinental champions, those Roddy Pipers, those Honky Tonk Mans, you know. So that that seems like a very classical place for that TNT title to go. Tom, Tom, oh, man. Man. Oh, man. Rock and Hall, baby. <laughs> still don't like that character. But I think hey, hey, don't be hating on Honky, man. I, I have, think that's the we point. We might have him on the show one day. Yeah, you never know. I said character, not the man behind the mask. Thank, okay, thank But uh, like, I just want to say something on a serious note on that match. I want to just give a kudos and commend to Matt Hardy. Because his father passed away that week. And, oh, I didn't. And he actually wrestled that match. They said something, not exactly that. But I didn't know that's what happened. His father passed away. They and... said, I, I read somewhere there. They, I don't know what it was. It was like a subtle hint at, I don't know, like maybe they said something like, with the things that have conspired this week. Uh, you know, some subtle hint. I don't even know where I heard it from. Maybe just Instagram. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't directly, I wasn't directly informed. Um, yeah. So I'm sorry to hear that. I, this yeah. is me finding that out right now for both Matt and Jeff and 
any other members of the, the Hardy family. Like, yeah. that but sucks. I, 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 obviously, yeah. that sucks. I, I'm more respectful words. That is incredibly sad, and I'm really. Uh, it's like I said. It's condolences to to the Hardy family, but I just want to give that commend to Matt Hardy for taking this match and going, going with it. Uh, I'll, you know, Tony kind of pretty sure gave him the option. You don't have to. I mean, this is it's different. You know, family comes first. But Matt Hardy went along with it, so I commend him. And the yeah. same, and the same goes out to Shotzi Blackheart. Her father passed away over the same day as well. She took that Tuesday matchup, you know, on that main event. That's another individual that took that. So I commend these two individuals for putting that aside and performing a show for us fans. And you know, that's why I respect the art of professional wrestling. The fact that these people are putting that aside to give us a show, and I commend both of these individuals and everyone else for doing that, you know, so and re rest in peace to Mr. Hardy and to Mr. Urbanski. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Urbanski. That's how you say her. The last, sorry if I'm mispronouncing. It's, it's Mr. Shot, Mr. Blackheart. Yeah. yeah. So definitely. I mean, that's, I commend to all these performers, but I commend everyone for, for doing what you do. And that's, that's why we do this. Cause we love that for a reason. So I cheers you. All right. Now, AEW news. I want to talk about, there's two of them. One is I'm going to let, I'm going to let Matt take care of this one because we had a debut on Elevation and on Dark. I'm actually no Elevation. Uh, Dark, I think he's going, he's going to debut next week on Dark or Elevation with Kenny Omega. So the floor is yours, Matt. Let the people know who is this individual who debuted on AEW Dark Elevation. With the promo that was cut, you know, I know Kenny was saying like how you mispronounced his name, but he's he's a wrestler from DDT, you know, DDT, the name, see, like it, like I don't even, I got to look up his name real quickly though, because like, because, but I, but what Kenny said about him is that he stayed, he let Kenny stay at his house when he was in Japan, when he first came over. So Kenny's like, I, he owes a lot to him, so like from his early days in DDT wrestling. So I guess this guy's not to, don't look at him as as uh don't look at him as like a new guy. He's been around a minute, you know, as like, you know, what they say Asian don't raisin. So that's why he still looks very youthful. They say so. that. <laughs> I just saw Chris's face. <laughs> My sister's Asian. I, I have no idea what you're talking I'm about. I'm sorry, but it's just a crystal out. He's like, "What? Is that, like, is that, is that the Asian version of Black Oak Crack?" Yeah, you? yeah, it is. I got you. Asian no raisin, so that's why like he he still has that very youthful like energy behind him. And uh let me look up his name cuz he was uh very very great overall though and i i should go back and watch that match though um, i gotta have that on my list and he had a performance great match with colt cabana in ddt pro wrestling main event as well mm -hmm. so this, this this individual is not uh obviously he's not familiar here in the states but he is very well known in japan especially for ddt this has main event a lot uh he's up there i mean he's uh, an age he's pretty much like a, you know what, like around what, mid 30s almost, right? Because he started. Konosuke right Takashita. Uh huh. Konosuke. Konosuke Takashita. That's or you could say uh -huh. Konosuke. You could say Konosuke or Konosuke. But Konosuke Takashita. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Bro. But yeah, definitely this guy will be will be seeing him next week on Elevation as they're teaming up. It's him, Michael Nakazawa, and Kenny Omega as they're going to go ahead and face off. Jesus, I already forgot what they're going to face off. Oh, that's the, the Seidel brothers. The Seidel brothers. And there's one more person who, who I forgot who was the last one we're going to face. See, now I already forgot. It was a six man tag, but I definitely. Oh, freak see. out. Oh, yeah, I, know, I know it's the Seidel brothers. So it has to be one more person. <laughs> it's not freak out. It was Nakazawa. He was teaming with Nakazawa against the Seidel brothers. Yeah, so. but it's. Oh, Danny Limelight. There you go. Danny Limelight. All right, and then the other AEW news that no wonder why we haven't seen her around as of late. Eva Lee's, I know it's been talked about all over social media, but we need to get to our, give our opinions about our, ourselves, our two cents about it. Well, what, did you just say they just cut Eva Lee's? Yes. She's in a tag team with Diamante, no? Not no more. AEW is in the position to be cutting women right now? No, Monsieur Fire! What the fuck, Tony? It Khan? happened. How we were friends. <laughs> Why can't we be friends? 
hands. You have so, amazing. You have this beautiful up and coming women's division. It's really starting to become fully fleshed out. Well, to give you the specific details of what occurred was. Yeah, I'm putting mouth disease right now. If there's like some other issue besides just firing her, I'm about to look real stupid, George. I promise. <laughs> so basically, I guess the news of her was because she put it on her Twitter, like it's repeating itself history again, mistreatment, all oh, well, that's life. I guess a lot of rumoring in your windows can be reporting that she was being mistreated backstage, did not like the direction that she was going uh, with her character, the matches that she'd been losing on a losing streak, been having, you know, feuds with the, you know, with the backstage agents, even with talents as well. Rumoring your window with Rosa and other women on that roster. So they decided to, you know, just let her go. But I guess the way how it was told that she would never sign a contract, she was paid per event, but was dedicated more with the AEW at the time. But what this occurred, they decided to not work with her anymore. So we have not seen her for the last couple of weeks because of that. So now everybody's trying to speculate, where is where is Ivory's going to go next? Where can she fit next? I mean, there you still you have NWA power. You have actually Ring of Honor, who's trying to rebuild their women's roster for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we could maybe see her in MOW because they, they're trying to build that up as well. Or go back, or go to Japan, go to Stardom, or go to DDT, you know, go to Yoshi Pro, or Tokyo NXT. Yoshi. Tokyo Yoshi, thank you. Or or, uh, or NXT. So I'll go with you, CK1. Where do you see Ivalice going? Which company you might have mentioned already? I know there's this rumor of a sort of Lucha Underground resurgence, but it's going to be under MLW. MLW. Yeah, so, right. So that might be the direction that she goes. I think that's a safe bet. Um, I don't think off the heels of rumors like that, whether you don't know if it's mistreatment by her or mistreatment by management, you know, it's kind of kind of goes back to, I don't want to bring up a lot of uh, negativity with the Tessa Blanchard situation. Right. You know, we kind of don't know who was behind the, the toxicity of, of what she's been through. I know there's a lot of finger pointing where she's like, you guys were dicks to me. And then the other people were like, no, you were kind of a dick to us. I think yeah. NXT is really good at not, or WWE is kind of good at like not bringing anyone with an aura like that over, um, especially if it's speculation. So I don't see her going up the ladder per se. Um, but yeah, I don't know her country of origin. Is she a citizen of the uh, United States or yeah, Mexico? Yeah, she's from here. She's from here, but her, yeah, you know, her nationality is from Puerto Rican. Okay, so yeah, that's legally America. So yeah, um, I, I say keep her continental, U.S., um, Ring of Honor would be great. I know Ring of Honor is trying to really like feel like they're a missing piece of this puzzle right now. Everyone's talking about AEW and Impact when Ring of Honor has been sitting right there the whole time, kind of like the original prom queen. Um, so it'd be nice if they got her hands on their hands on her. You know, um, I don't know about Japan. Like Japan's fine without her. I think she'd do better here. Yeah, maybe Impact too. You know, I forgot to mention Impact, but good, good call. But oh, I well, just want to get back what you said very briefly. Like, we don't know the sides of the story, but it's kind of like how Emma's situation. See, Emma, Tanya Dashwood, she got fired because yeah, she... Yeah, she got fired because she would not stay in but, character on Twitter. Yeah, no, no. Which she is wasn't even, it, yeah. it is what it is. I don't know why she wouldn't listen yeah. to what she's being told. But then also, it's kind of like, it's it's one of those, like, you had to be there. Like, the yeah. end of the story real quickly was that she's a heel on NXT, but she would go to Twitter and be like, really nice to everybody and not being character and it was conflicting with what was happening on something screen. in your personal life you know yeah yeah and they told her hey listen if you can be on twitter you just got to be the emily or the emma character just be the badass bitch the character don't be the sweet loving australian online just play the character online for us will you and she's like oh yeah sure and then she didn't yeah. and she was told a few times and they finally cut her for it yeah it is what it is it's it, you know um but again with the evil lisa thing I didn't know about it until you told me right now. So my opinions are just speculation. Yeah. Money bike. There's always two sides to the story, right? We don't know and probably will never know the AEW side or, you know, what went on there. Um, Ivalice made that, that post. And I was reading online that supposedly she was in NXT at one point and that they let yeah. her go. Yeah. Uh, she was in Lucha Underground, and they let her go. Ooh. That there's a, a trend here. There's a pattern. 
common uh, in going on. And well, uh, on the Lucha, my, my apologies, interrupt Lucha because she was not able to compete in the other other promotion, so she was stuck there by contract by force. So she was fighting that to get out of that contract. That's the only thing why. But other than that, it had nothing to do with her attitude on Lucha attitude Brown. or anything. No. Yeah. So you know, it, we'll never know what really went on, right? But she has to kind of break away from that sort of stigma of, or, or kind of, she, you know, you could start somewhere new, right? Ring of Honor. She could go ahead and go to Japan, right? There's other places now, and that's the great thing. You could go somewhere else and start anew and, you know, build yourself up and maybe, you know, down the line, Hopefully it's, it was the bird the the bridge has not been burned to the point where she can't go back right so it, I, you know it, I, wrestling when it comes down to it both heels and faces they gotta be able to trust and work with each other to know that you got their back out in the ring and you can't have somebody that is at odds with somebody somebody there because you know that's when things you know you you put them in the ring and things could possibly go wrong or, or you know you. It's all sorts of things could happen. So as Tony Khan or whoever's in charge in AEW that, that let her go, they got to watch out for the roster. They got to watch out for the people. So you got to ge- keep good morale, right? So there you go. Definitely. Mr. Callis. I guess well, ML, MLW seems like the most likely uh, for one of them. So MLW is like right there and it's where a lot of, and then GCW, uh, what was it Josh, Josh bear? Was it Josh, Josh Barnett, talking about Josh, Josh Barnett. Barnett. That's who it was. Yeah. Josh Barnett's GCW. That seems like another kind of like really like cool up and comer, you know, I guess like, especially for like the tough, you know, very tough, uh, um, the, like the tough P- type of, uh, type of gimmick more or less atmosphere aura yeah you know i mean this wasn't on your um this wasn't on your pro wrestling news but actually right behind me <laughs> oh so, go ahead let the world know so i i oh, left yeah. in the comments so i i constantly talk about like maki i was talking about maki ito repeatedly and you know she her like before she finally made her appearance on aew this is another individual i've talked about from japan multiple times and now she's i guess in the musical world she's a j-pop idol she's now pretty much a free agent because you know she just had her graduation concert it was a big graduation concert and she brought four wrestlers from the pro wrestling noah roster on stage and all they did was flex and do wrestling moves to each other like they 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 suplexed each other and they chopped each other in a stadium in japan full of like i guess fifteen thousand, twenty thousand people you know just, just, th- and they gave them headsets just for them to flex. There's Mara Fuji and there's Kaito Kiyomiya, both for former G- GHW champions, right here. So there's a good chance she might be coming to um, to AEW mainly because of this right here. I think I might have shared a picture of her and Kenny Omega before, but um, clarify that picture too to the to our viewers and. and <laughs> Before yeah, because they <laughs> they'll assume right away. Yeah, right away, like just because they they see, no, Kenny Omega did not get married to Matsui Jirina, you know. Despite you know, despite uh, let's see, but yeah, this is a especially with like the white dress and them both having crowns in the picture. But this is like the main reason Jirina could show up at AEW just because of her close uh, friendship with Kenny. So she could like she could do the she could be on the Japanese commentary team. She might sing a song. She might be in the ring. Who knows? She could face uh, Jade Cargill. Who knows? So the list the list could go on. She put she put Nyla Rose in the Texas Cloverleaf on on a J-pop drama that she was the star of. Each one of I'm not saying this. I'm not. There's no bullying. There's no side scene in this. I'm just gonna say this. One of Nyla Rose's legs weighs as much as this, this, this woman. <laughs> and it's happened. And it happened. If, I should show you the clip, Chris. It's a very, it's a, it's called Tofu Wrestling. And it's like a 20, it's like a 26 episode uh, J- Japanese drama starring Matsui Jirina. 
and Nyla Rose was what was a guest character, and Kenny, I think he was like a technical advisor to the show. Yeah. Nyla was on a Canadian sitcom before she was a wrestler. She was like a big, she's a famous TV star uh, yep. up north for you know a while. So TV I'd love, I'd love to see Nyla and more uh, t- doing some more acting. I want to, I love seeing that side, the acting side to wrestlers. You know, seeing Cody on TV shows, seeing Kenny on shows. Seeing everybody, you know, like the right. seeing wrestlers co- crossover is like the coolest thing, you know. Maki Ito's in a zombie movie for crying out loud in Japan. <laughs> oh, no. she's gonna be a zombie! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's her and all the girls in her girl group, and they're fighting zombies. It's it's crazy, and it's two parts. I it's a two part this. zombie movie. <laughs> I have to see that. That's a must for me. And you know, she's and this girl's in a in a movie where where money kills you. It's crazy. That is Ooh, insane. That's a metaphor. Yeah. And, and speaking it's of called crazy, death cash. But speaking oh, of I crazy, do I do real quick? I'm like, so I know way into niche Japanese horror thrillers. You want to see at, it? I'll send it to you. I worked at uh, Blockbuster Video for a while. That's how old I am. And I made sure to watch one foreign section movie every week. And I got real into weird Japanese stuff, man. Like Ichi the Killer. Uh, Shark skin suit man and peach chip girl. Um, there was one uh, apartment something something where Battle it was like two ah. yeah, two roommates were like, "Oh, did you eat my dinner? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, did you use my soap?" And then it eventually turned into Kill Bill, where they were like, "Oh, I'm gonna stab you for eating my butter. I'm gonna light you on fire for using my hairspray." Mm. Japanese thriller horror movies are so legit. Definitely. I'll send it to you guys if you want to see it. Please. Death Cash. Just, just, yeah, I'll send it. To, remind me. I want to watch that. If you want to watch Tofu Wrestling or Death Cash, I've got send the Send me links. that Maki Ito one. I want to, that's some, that one I'm very interested in. That, that one's that hard one to get interested. to. I think okay. that's like that was like a locally produced film in Fukuoka. Okay. So I'd, I'd have to go get a plane flight and I'm like, hey, what's up, man? You got any of those DVDs? <laughs> <laughs> and he's got the trench coat full of Japanese DVDs. Oh, like, yeah. The pirate ones. You're like right in right the corner of Slots and Figaro or not. Slots <laughs> Figaro. Ah, Jesus Christ. There you go. You hey, I, I know, man. Spot. Right. You I don't want to really get on that corner, homie. Right by the Chase Bank, right there. I already know. They got <laughs> you, like, hey, bro. You already know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> the trench coat. I'm Pirate Man. <laughs> Speaking of who's, what's crazy, though, it was coming back for a one time mm-hmm. event. Mm-hmm. Another forbidden, board, forbidden door has opened. <laughs> that is Mamma Mia! Mar- Maro, Mar- my boy. Maro Ranallo. Back to announce. The Kenny Omega Rich Swan match, and I am so happy because yeah. if Impact, if Don, you you fucking Don Callis, you better he will better get him part time, bro. Because I think the dream team for announcing is me and Morrow just side by side. It's like new the best of New Japan no, together. No, no, no. I rather have I rather have Morano and Striker and Dilo perfectly fine. Oh. I, 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 like I'll guess commentary too. Come on, you loved me. You loved me and uh, oh my God. you loved me alongside uh, Kevin Kelly. But me and Mar, because Maro was an announcer for New Japan as well. So yes, he let's, was. yes. So you get you get this dream New Japan team you never got to hear. I'm very happy for Morano because this is something different, and I know he's going to cause this match incredibly fucking. Uh, ma- mama impact, me. Impact's going to be <laughs> yes. It, he increases the watchability of Impact. It's going to be just like on the edge of your seat every week. Yeah. Just I just like, wish that the NXT never jumped. Never jumped and he could cuss him. now. He's like, holy <laughs> shit. I just wish he didn't jump the ball on him in NXT. He fit perfectly fine uh, with him, Nigel, and Beth. I loved it. I, I enjoyed that commentary. I don't know if you guys ever did. Yeah. But I, I enjoyed I loved it. it with him, Nigel. Uh, but I, you know, I understand it's a big corporate compared to this. It's different, but I'm very happy for Ronald. I'm pretty sure you guys are excited, right? Oh man, Not, uh, Maro, he's one of my favorite announcers. You know, whether it's in Showtime or in wrestling or whatever it is, Bellator. Oh, yeah. Bellator. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he he's the man for sure. Yeah. Um, if I were to start my own promotion, <laughs> Circle Debate Wrestling. Uh, yes, then, you please. know, he would be on the top of my list definitely. Uh, I'll have him over Michael Cole any day. Hell yeah. Any time of the <laughs> yeah. day. I'll say Man. that. He is the 
for for me, he's a second to JR. It's him, Mur- <laughs> Murano, Excalibur. Yeah, I'm, that's that's my. Yeah. But what my Mount Rushmore's? I mean, one. I mean, it is present, but that'll be that. I mean, that's just me. It's different. It's different. I, it's different. I agree. Mm-hmm. But all right, yeah. CK One, are you excited? I know you're excited, man. Yeah, I love Morrow. I grew up watching Morrow through Pride. Pride. Um, him and Boss Rutten are one of my favorite MMA tag team commentators of all time. Um, and then he went over to Strike Force, crushed it there. Then he started doing uh, World Championship Boxing. He did, like, the Mayweather matches. The guy is as versatile. He's probably the greatest commentator of all time. Yeah. Um, that being said, he gets very wordy in NXT, though. He gets very hyperbole. He makes as many hip references as possible. I kind of think he needs to tone that down a bit, but that's his style, and that's fine. But he'll do things like, oh, he got hung out there drawing a clothesline faster than Suge Knight's dry cleaning over a death row record. I'm like, <laughs> so, like, nah, I like it. I like I it. It's it, so man. funny. It. But that, he just, he just, it just runs on more into the match. I'm just like, he, he does kind of force, like, as the kids say, that match was lit. I'm like, <laughs> he, he does it. He does that. And I love it for him. It's, it's very, very campy. I get it. But when he's down to business, he can get down to business because no one is more versatile um, than Morrow in any sport. The guy can commentate ice drying, and I'd be like, I mean, that is exciting. Come I'm on, like, especially, do that. especially when he gets up, don't tell me, don't tell me, oh, my God! Uh, come on, like, Chris, Jesus, I'll say, Christ, I gotta tell all you guys know? about, there's a Twitter page just about funny quotes that Don Callis has said, yeah, yeah, yeah. and <laughs> and now now I'm just imagining that and Morrow together. Oh, the Morrow all- one would be, it would be epic. It would be as long as uh, his actual resume um, ever. He He's good. God damn, he's good. He's off the cuff. He's clever. Um I think one one of the Don Callis like quotes was like, "Oh, you he wants an erotic autograph. Ugh, they need bigger paper, you know." <laughs> That's pretty good too. All right, Cause, cause Cyrus has always been writing that stuff. Though I love Cyrus, I love him everywhere he's been. Well, um, I want to see them together. That's like, um, you know, I, I I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, Don. I'll we air, we but will I see on April twenty fifth on that one. That's for yeah. sure. Um. Anyways, uh, real quick, where's Marl going? Is he going to AEW? No, it's Impact. Impact. Impact oh, Rebellion. Awesome. All right, cool. He cool. will be announcing that main event for Kenny Omega. If title versus well, he's title not versus... back permanently. He's not like... It's like, only a one-time Brown thing. One-time thing. One match. But one match. Yeah. We'll, yes, we'll just the main event. But I'm hoping this give, gives him that... Oh, I want to come We'd back. love to have Morrow. We, we would love to have you stay, Morrow. We'd lo- love to have you here. You know, you have that next-level consciousness. Oh, you know. <laughs> um... Yeah, I don't care where Morrow ends up. I'll be happy for him. I know he is a big advocate for mental health. The guy does as much work as he can to help people that are going through what he's going through. Um, I just I just want him healthy. Healthy. Healthy is not a word, people. Healthy. Healthy and happy and paid. That's what he deserves. Mm, there you go. Definitely. Now, the last topic of the evening of this pro wrestling news and the ending of part one, part two, we'll be discussing with New Japan and – Rest and WrestleMania than NXT. So this one, of course, it's cut season. <laughs> From today, a year, a year ago, we had the same situation. We had Leo, Leo Rush, uh, Canela, Canelis. We had so many that were cut. It was the same fucking day, and today we had Drake shocking Maverick, ones. allegedly. Yes, at the time, Drake Maverick. So it was a lot of shocking ones. I mean, today we it was unexpected. Billy Kid, the Iconics, are gone. Mojo Mojo is gone. I've seen who else? Chelsea Green is gone. Callisto is gone. Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas is gone. Bo Dallas is gone. gone. Wesley Blake is gone. Mm-hmm. Um, who was going to say? Uh, you know, Samoa Joe is gone. I mean, that one. We this opens the door to so many great yeah, things. One, so I it's feel like I feel like he made Mickey James that. another one as well. Mickey, Mickey James, fuck, dude, one of the goats right there. It this was a shocker. I think the obviously the sh- most shocking is one. I mean, I'll ask you guys individually as well, but the shocking one for me was the Iconics, I and Samoa mm-hmm. and Chelsea. I think, and Mickey, Mickey James was expected, in my opinion. I feel 
they fucked up on splitting the icons first of all because they could have developed they could have them to help that women's tag team division we already discussed about that and that should have been since, since the beginning when they first split it they should have never split them at all in the first place because now you're making that NX, not an excuse me the main roster's women tag team title e irrelevant of that whatever it is because who do you have on the roster now mandy mandy well, and, and dana and riot squad the original and, and women's Tamina tag titles and, were supposed and, to be defended on all three shows and they went and just made nxt tag titles like what the fuck uh, yeah, yeah i don't know what direction they're going with uh uh, Mickey James, it was expected. You know, she's they were gonna use her anyway. Ever since she came back, had that botch with Oscar, you could tell that they don't want to do anything with her, man. They're like, I don't know what. Yeah, I'm not even get into it. Um, I think she'll she'll probably work with her husband in NWA. Uh, that seems just, like that could be a possibility. Yeah, I will. She'd be event. she'd be a good NWA champion, Mickey James, Serena Deeb she on can, uh, NWA Power. She could build that that that, that women's division. Most definitely with Serena Deeb, with Camille Brickhouse. They're able to do something with that division for sure in NWA. Um, Chelsea Green. Yeah, I did mention on the chat, injury prone, but had a lot of potential. You, I think, my opinion, they screwed up calling her up to the main roster is too soon. Not having a lot of matches in NXT. They they dropped the ball on that one 100%. Because they, it just she has that charisma. Most definitely that she's able to sell and get a get us the fans intrigued of her character. So they, that's a big fuck up for me. Uh, Samoa Joe is the one that's the biggest shocker because I didn't actually expect that. Uh, you just had him commentate at WrestleMania and then you let him go the next day. Literally. What's yeah. up with that? What, what, what the fuck? Hey, you know what? Why? You know what? Let me let me do two things real quickly. Let me remind people again. Chris, who was your first match against? Oh, just some big guy from Huntington Beach you've never heard of standing right behind you on your right. Yep, uh, name Samoa Joe, and I'm. Not, I won't stop reminding people Chris' first match, and this the Samoa Joe being released not only means like. I don't want to rematch, Joe. Please don't bring that muscle buster my way, homie. I'm we're friends. Please, I'm good. <laughs> Chris, let's have that. Let's have that rematch. Let's, I think this is going to be. It's go. Oh, let's have an Iron Man match. Yeah. I love you guys would have a classic, oh, you know, at Circle of Debate Wrestling. Joe's, this will Joe's be our debut match like a, for the championship. Been, Joe's put on a hundred pounds since I last saw him, and I had put on ten. So well, I'm scared to that. Chris, you win by roll up. <laughs> yeah. The most devastating move in professional wrestling. Hell the surprise yeah. roll up. Surprise. Chris will get a roll up, and then he'll win the belt yeah, or yeah, the I'll first Circle of Debate Wrestling up. Championship. <laughs> you're, making a, you're making this very, uh, very difficult. I know what you want, man. I know what you want. You want give me what I, I want. Give me what I want. You know what it is. Say it. Samoa Joe hey. versus Tetsuya Naito. Samoa Joe versus Kenny oh, Omega. Dude. Samoa Joe in New Japan. Samoa Joe no back in Noah again. Like this, this makes rest. Samoa Joe being free of WWE makes wrestling all over the world great again. Samoa Joe being able to get back in the goddamn ring. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> If he is still injured or if he is not injured and wanted to wrestle and they said no and he wanted out, I don't know the exact details. Well, 90 days is a good amount of time to recover. Oh, yeah. I mean, he had a fucked up shoulder, right? Yeah. That's yeah. what it was. Definitely. So, but, yeah. I, it's weird. He literally carried that WrestleMania on the mic. And here's a big fuck you for carrying that show. You yeah, know? it's like how Jim Cornette said, fuck you, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, there fuck you, you bye. Thank you, fuck you, bye. So, but yeah, I'm gonna save you. Oh back. wait, isn't it? Uh, my uh, keychain even says Huntington Beach on it. <laughs> oh, you might want to not reveal that in today's climate with what's going on down there. <laughs> yeah, you, no. Hey, the the beach just has to stay open later. That's that's my only thing. They got the they got a good uh they got a couple good restaurants down there. <laughs> yeah, Money, Mike. Beach Street Bar and Grill. I want to hear <laughs> your thoughts because I'm saving director for last because. No, those were my thoughts. I just gave them. All no, the you have one thing to say that I want you to tell to the world, but I'm, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Money Mike go ahead. And okay, I don't know what it is, but I'm excited to know. Go what back I to the I chat. Though, what you said, who else should be canned instead of talent? But I want you. Oh to yeah, that. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money Mike, go ahead. Now, it sucks, right? These people lose their, you know, their job, and I don't know how much of a warning i guess it's just a phone call and hey bye and then that's it you know it sucks that it has to go that way sometimes 
I see a lot of potential for these people to go to different places, right? Uh, I'll start with the Iconics. I it, think it was just one of them, though. It was just Billy Kay. No, both of them. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> there you I was, go. I was mad about one of them. I am doubly mad about both of them. I mean, at least they can stay together. They are a long way from home. Yeah. Literally. So at least they can stay together, but fuck you. Yeah. I mean, it, it, even if, you know, may, maybe like Billy Kay decides to go back home and, and help Australian wrestling, right? With the WWE name behind her now, you know, in her resume, I think that would be good for Australia, you know, for the scene over there, probably. Um, Peyton Royce has her husband in AEW. True that. I yeah. do feel Great point. that. I do feel that the women's division in AEW could use a little comedy, right? Um, you know, maybe jump, maybe be the lay the foundation to a tag team division there, or who knows, maybe even go to Impact and then join that division. So you know, there, there there's possibilities, there's doors that are open nowadays. We're not in 2002, so you know, there's that. Uh, Chelsea, man. Oof, that, that to me was the biggest surprise. Well, other, other she, than she Joe. did botch her debut, right? Didn't she like throw someone off the ropes and land on her broke her, broke her arm or something? No, they drop kick her on her arm and then they broke. Okay, so that wasn't exactly her fault, right? No, things okay. happen, man. Things, things happen. happen. Things back. Yeah, um, you know what? A, what a tough tough break there. You know, you get your de debut. She recently appeared on SmackDown, from what I remember. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it sucks. And, you know, and I'm pretty sure out of everybody, she kind of, she. I'm just assuming that she would feel pretty bad about it. But, you know, she could go with Zach or Matt Cardona. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh. I don't know if you want to see Chelsea and Tino Dashwood in the same building. I don't know about that. Is that I mean, what Mike was saying? I think, uh, I think Cardona might disagree with you there. <laughs> if you know what I, mean. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> but go ahead, my buddies. Go ahead. Am I, am I missing a am I missing a little thruple thing going on? Yes. Go ahead, Mike. You tell him. Uh, so um, Cardona was with uh, Dashwood uh, before Chelsea Green. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were I, in a relationship. I thought this before was something him. new, where he was double dipping in the Australian sweet cake or something. Oh no, he he had that cake already. He he likes he likes that accent. I see. Yeah, he yeah. went from he went from Australia to British Columbia, Canada. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. World traveling. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of he's the a, world. He's got a, a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> yes, he has. He, he got the stamps. Well, on, episode on. fifty is now TMZ. I love this. <laughs> yeah. Well, when when you find out all about where we travel, you know, you find out the real truth of where it is. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know, but Matt, Matt Cardona has next level consciousness, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. Now, Samoa Joe. Oh, and, and by the way, I feel bad Matt for Matt Cardona's now dating Samoa Joe? That'd no, be no, hot. Well, I feel bad for Tucker. Meanwhile, we're talking oh, that's, about... That's just so... I don't understand that either. I mean, I understand I, it, but I don't understand why that machine, every machinery wasn't a thing. Right. And, you know, I think they were doing pretty well as a tag team. You know... They gave Otis the money in the bank. I do believe that they should have used it for the tag titles. Elevate the tag titles. May, make the tag titles something that you are willing to sp spend your money in the bank on. You, you know? were saying that because technically they've never said that you can't cash in the money and that you can cash the money in the bank on any title. Technically, right? And they just yes. never addressed it's that? Nev it's <laughs> never specified as a world title. It says... A champ, any championship. A champion, if you're choosing. A and they're always like, "Is Becky going to cash it in on Raw or SmackDown?" Right. But I think, they never I think said brands are kind of. I think brands are the exception. I think, and nowadays. No, um, because they were like two years ago. Becky was like, "Who's Becky going to cash it in on, uh, Oscar or Charlotte?" There you go. There you go. And I, I kind of oh, well, I had this theory also that. Uh, Otis was going to try to cash in and then Mandy Rose was going to give him a low blow. Or it could have been Tucker too. So, I don't know. So, what sucks is that Tucker's, you know, It was Tucker, there. wasn't it though? Huh? It was Tucker though, right? Like, Tucker caused him to lose it to the Miz? I don't wasn't remember. That, yes, he was. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Did he? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the, the Miz was like, challenge me to a match for the, for, the, for the briefcase and that's when Tucker turned on him. Yeah. Ah. 
There you go. That's so, the last thing I remember about main roster. I'm sorry. I have no. That's the last him. thing I remember about Tucker, other than being beat up. <laughs> you know, you know, main event. The, that's the shame. Uh, so yeah, so shame on that. Samoa Joe, man. The, the I this is one of those occasions where it's good news coming from bad news, right? The possibilities have opened up. The the for, forbidden doors, right? Are opening up and uh, uh, hopefully, my, oh, my heart, the most forbidden door of all, my heart has been opened. Yes. <laughs> because imagine Samoa Joe and Kenny Omega, man. Oof. Right behind me. Yes, yes. So, yes, sir. Uh, Samoa Joe is such an awesome talent. And honestly, I wish I would have seen him while he was in TNA and all that. It took him being in the main roster. And honestly, it took me seeing him and Seth Rollins face-to-face when he was a commentator. Uh, it, that That's what it took me to, to see Joe in a whole new level. But hopefully, he's good to wrestle. And hopefully, he brings us some great matches with new talent. Absolutely. MGC, do you have any thoughts about any releases that you were... I mean, besides... Samoa Joe. I think that's the only one you want, huh? Just give you what you want, right? It makes the it makes the whole wrestling world like the other dream match is Naito versus uh Samoa Joe. But like I said about um about Mickey James, that's like a big, you know, step up for NWA. You know, she's gonna wanna like like work alongside her husband. So that'll be and she's a like longtime veteran, hardcore country coming back. Hardcore country coming to NWA power. You know, that, that division, who knows? And remember that, that it's not just an open door. The open door goes so many different directions. We could see Mickey James on AEW holding that NWA title, you know? Yeah. All, all those. Woo. (laughs) 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 I'm going to have the director kill this on the note for part one of episode 50. You expressed yourself earlier off, off the air. And I would like for you to do this on the air. Yeah. And now, let, that, now that I'm picking up what you're throwing down, I got you. Exactly. And I would love for you to end it with this killing note to so all when of our these, viewers. When, when these roster cuts happen, uh, what is the number one reason that these roster cuts, they usually have a blanket release statement? Um, it'll be like, oh, we've separated away with said artists. We wish them, well, yeah, that perhaps. We wish them well in their future endeavors. But then we find out, like, the reason that they were on this list to begin with Maybe it was contractual, but the real reason sometimes is, oh, just creative didn't have something for you. I'm sorry. We got to let you go. The guys that we pay to come up with ideas for you weren't doing their job, so we're going to fire you instead of them. That's a bullshit excuse, and those writers need to be held liable for not being able to be creative enough to keep these people employed. Or they should be responsible for not being creative enough, and their jobs should be on the line, not the talent that are being told what to do then getting fired for not having anything told to them to do. It makes no sense. If you work in a kitchen, you're not going to get fired because the delivery guy didn't deliver the food. You're going to fire the delivery guy. These guys are cutting the the chefs in the kitchen. Um, That's the best metaphor I could have for a spur-of-the-moment speech like this. But there needs to be liability held on people responsible for when that excuse is applied. Um, Oh, I'm uh, Dana Brooke. There's nothing for you. We're not creating. Uh, Chelsea Green maybe was too green, pun intended. Tucker, sorry, we don't have anything for you. We're, we're not creative enough. We're going to keep the shitty guys that don't write for you and fire the guy that can probably do what he's told as he's been doing. Um, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about because I don't run a billion dollar sports entertainment industry, but that's how I'm looking at it. Touche. It could be Johnny Ace. Hey! So I'm, I'm back in the talent relations. What if I fire people? Hey, you fired. You're cool. I love you. What if I fire you? Like, hey, Vince, you don't need this guy. People power. You know? People power. Mm. <laughs> Piece of shit. This is starting all over because of him. But yeah, I, you know what? I'm, that's just me. John how, Ly- how, do you, how do you not have something for both fucking Dallas, dude? Like, put him in a fiend gimmick. You just see what you stop, stop letting the fiend lose WrestleMania. But also. Right. And there's plenty. I can come up with something for Bo Dallas right off the fucking spot. Here's he could be Sister Abigail. This is what Done. I thought. This is what I right right quick before we end this. I thought Bo Dallas 
since yeah, they separated Alexa Bliss from The Fiend, they separated them. I thought Alexa would have a feud with The Fiend, having Bo Dallas be her her Fiend and having brother versus brother. That's the idea I, I kind of had. That. You can address that they're brothers. They Mike said no, he don't like it. They have <laughs> never done that. There's never once. Even no, when no, was Husky uh, Harris. Uh, not that I didn't like that. I love the idea. And it, it, honestly, it was the best way to go. What are you going to do? Have Alexa f- the feud with The Fiend? No, you need a, a somebody there, a, a, a proxy, right? Someone that is going to do that for her. Break that the fourth fiend. wall. Like your taker and Kane. Of- Break like your taker and Kane Paul Barrow. Yes. See? Be like Bray, listen. Or um, what's his real name? Like Mike Jr., Mike, Rot- Mike William Rotunda? I forget Bray Wyatt's real name. Uh, Mike, Mike Jr.? No. This is his dad's uh, name. No such thing yet. But, bro, so I forgot his real name. I don't know. Not to brother. Jojo about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> too soon? Too soon. But I'm just saying, like, I, they do say that creative has nothing for you often enough to where the diehard fans within this podcasting world know that they say that. So it's not, I'm not making up this excuse that they do. There's always, oh, crew, we, the last year it was the, the pandemic <laughs> budget cuts. This year it's Matt with a sniveling nose. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I was going to, I was going to run upstairs to, to spray, but you know. We're almost if, done. These, if these characters are invaluable, try harder. Um, yeah, just, or like I said, fire the writers who aren't coming up with these ideas. Cause that's right. I mean, I'm not in there. I'm not in the writing room, obviously. And they you should be they, Mike. You they should, wouldn't, be. <laughs> they wouldn't want me in there to begin with. They don't want um, ratings, but I mean, I'm sure they do, but I feel everything gets funneled by a gentleman by the name of Vince McMahon who shoots down probably some kick-ass ideas. You know, it's, we don't know. Maybe they... I, I know for a fact. You can just tell Vince is the kind of guy to shoot down a great idea only because it wasn't his. Right. Or that's it. He could end a good idea for petty reasons like the hurt business. Morale. <laughs> Morale, Mike. Hold on. I got him. Morale. I got him on the I got him on the phone right now. Oh. <laughs> Get him on. <laughs> hey, pal. Yeah, Vince, go home. Vince, he's listening. He's listening. He's on speakerphone. He's listening. Hey, pal, we will write for you if you fucking sign us. Uh, what's it's like, Chris? What the hell is this again? Why do you keep calling me? You know, I'm just trying to eat my turkey got sandwich. A, got a delivery of chicken fajitas, <laughs> all wrapped up. Uh, <laughs> it's midnight yeah. on the East Coast, man. That's right. It's 12:54 at midnight. That's right. And he's probably watching old, uh, like, like golden era WWF. Ah, just like the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, boobs. Yeah, blonde hair. Uh, oh, Vince man. McMahon. Puppies. Puppies. Uh, Puppies. Just, oh, uh, why can't things be like that? Uh, I've got a billion do- 50. He's got like a couch made of of uh, of like a hundred thousand dollars, and he's just like. Uh. <laughs> well, there you have it. It's just <laughs> it's a couch made of couch. all the singlets that the fiend lost at WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> That is part one of episode 50, ladies and gentlemen. So don't go anywhere, part two, as we will go and give our recap first. We got the new Japan news, because we have been coming up with Mr. Catalyst here in a minute. And we're going to go ahead and recap WrestleMania night one and two, and then this past week, NXT. This is then moved on to Tuesdays because there was uh, unexpected events that happened, and I was like, what? But I'd rather say that for part two, so don't go anywhere. Make sure you, you know. Right after this, part two will start right after. So we'll see you. So take a, a special look of our fellow sponsors. <laughs> 